Hi guys and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. Thanks very much for coming back and checking out the channel today. It's a pleasure to have you back here as usual. So I'm hoping today we can give you a little bit of different approach to security. The purpose of today's video is to address security on both our server and our websites and our services and really discuss how we can benefit from tightening up in certain ways. So stick around, let's just jump straight into it and see how it all works. So guys, I'm gonna keep it nice, short and sweet, hopefully on this one. And this is where we're gonna start. We're looking obviously at the very base level when we're self-hosting with our Unraid server. Quite often people start with, how do I reverse proxy all of these containers so then I can get to them remotely? And the first question I ask in those appointments is, why do you need to reverse proxy them? And it's a genuine question where I really try to understand the problem that they're trying to solve. And a lot of the time they're saying, well, I just want to be able to get to my radar or sonar. The simple answer to that is you don't need to reverse proxy any of them. In fact, these days we're recommending don't reverse proxy anything as much as possible. Think about the reverse proxy process, right? We're setting up a reverse proxy it's going to make that web page or that app accessible on the web and unless you're applying any sort of restriction on that publicly available website guess what it's publicly available and even if you've got credential protection on top it's still a target for someone to sit there and attack if you have something that needs to be publicly accessible then you should protect it with the absolute best possible option and something like Othelia can help or authentic or anything along those lines but if you go back that one step and really ask yourself, does it even need to be publicly available? Then we can cut down on the infrastructure that we have to worry about and run. So I'll give you some examples, right? Out of all these containers you're looking at here, there's only one thing that I reverse proxy, and that's Overseer. And there's a really important reason why that's the case. Because Overseer is being accessed by my family and friends, etc., And that means that when they go to access it, I don't want them having to jump through a million hoops to get to it. We still have authentication here anyway, but if you really want to take that extra step, you could. So what we're really saying then is, if we only have that one app, how do I get to everything else? All right, well, that's where some other tools like WireGuard or TailScale, in my preference, can really help you. So let's look at that for a second. When people are watching our videos, it can be easily confused between all the different tools, especially when we've made a video reviewing one particular tool it's hard to see it in the holistic context of all the other tools that we have in play and how they interact and talk with each other. So what I'm going to do for you is take you through a bit of a graph that's going to make it a lot easier to explain what's going on. But just so you know how we're going into this, keep these following points in mind. We're using three major tools here. We're using Cloudflare, which is our Cloudflare tunnel application. We're using TailScale, which is our VPN application. And we're using Nginx Proxy Manager as our reverse proxy application. Now, we've done extensive videos on each of those three. So what I'm doing today is giving you the overview on how they all interact as a stack and how we can use them to benefit us and keep as secure as possible. So here's our fancy little graph that I've managed to draw up for you today. Obviously, we've got our server down here running on this fictitious IP address. We then have a whole bunch of stuff here on the right hand side one in the middle and one on the left, okay? Three different determining stacks. So usually the reason why I suggest something like TailScale or WireGuard for customers straight off the bat is you're gonna be able to access your apps without having to reverse proxy and having your apps publicly available. So what does that offer us? Well, it means that no matter what device they're on, it could be on their phone or their desktop or any other device that is able to install the TailScale client, they sign in, they connect to the TailScale network, to their TailScale network or TailNet, and then it, they will be able to access stuff that is on the local LAN where they're running TailScale. So you saw in my Unraid server, I've got TailScale running on there, and I've passed through particular parameters, which are shown in our videos, of course, and in our written guide, that allow us to get to any other device on that local network. And that means I can essentially pretend that I'm at home with those devices and access them as if I'm local. Now, there are inherent risks in doing that still, which is the fact if we're using TailScale, for example, we are technically going through a third party. So is it the most secure? I'll let you decide. I'm really relying on the third party's capabilities to keep me safe, which to be honest, they've got more resources than I do. So the chances are I'm probably a little bit safer. 
but that's just my opinion. In the center, we have what's traditionally known as a port forward operation. It's an app. We open a port for it. That app goes out to the internet. Happy days. On the left hand side, we're using the Cloudflare tunnel option, which is also one of my favorite options to use. And you'll notice that in both the Cloudflare tunnel and the VPN options, we don't have to open any ports. No open ports means a lot more secure and a lot less surface area for someone to come in and do harm. So what we've got is a tunnel. The tunnel talks to our reverse proxy and the reverse proxy is talking to our apps. So here's Overseer, the example I gave you earlier. Overseer is talking to NPM. NPM reverse proxies it through the tunnel. The tunnel sends that communication straight through. But realistically, this actually comes out and heads over and tunnels its way straight through to Cloudflare. All right, so we're still talking about no ports being open. Now, Cloudflare is sitting here in the center and that's acting as our DNS. You may not use Cloudflare. Past that is the edge, then the internet. Open wide internet lives out there. When we close those ports, we really help take away a lot of the risk, all right? A lot of that risk just dies out naturally. We've then got Plex talking here on port 3360. That's a fictional port. I just put it in there. By default, Plex uses 32400. What you can do in a lot of scenarios to help in this scenario, if you have to open a port, is say on your router, you put the external port to 3360 and the internal port to 32400. So out of these three options, you have a lot of flexibility. Now I can say all my sort of internal secure apps, I don't really want that kind of information getting out there. I've locked it behind the VPN, it has to be authenticated. I have to be the one getting in and then I can access that stuff. On the left hand side is our, what we would assume some risk there is being overseer, being publicly available, but it's still going through a few layers. If you watch our Cloudflare related videos, you'll see that we have things like SSL certificates, both on the origin, coming from Cloudflare, so then they have a secure communication with each other. But the tunnel is also communicating directly to Cloudflare 2, which means that when you're looking at our DNS records, there are no publicly available DNS records. They point to the tunnel and the tunnel is encrypted. So that to me is a good way to run things. And this is why I suggest that in our appointments. And I think that's why a lot of people really enjoy having this option. Um, I'll show you another little bonus thing here on why using this kind of setup is good with the tunnel. So here's another quick diagram I uh, drew up for you. And this is a good way that you, if you are using something like the tunnel, the Cloudflare tunnel, how you can kind of mask the origin server across various domains. So let's say you have www.domain2, domain3, domain4. All we have to do is point those to say domain1. Domain1.com points its primary record to this tunnel that tunnel is living on server number one. So if somebody was to then look up and all of them are proxied through Cloudflare, so it's hiding the origin name entirely anyway, but we know that people can still get your DNS record. It's not really top secret. So what happens then is when they get it, all they're gonna see is the Cloudflare tunnel address. Once they've got the Cloudflare tunnel address, it's just gonna send them into a loop of other domains that we're pointing at. But it adds that extra layer, just like an onion, as Shrek would say, to give us a bit more protection. So guys, I hope this diagram makes sense to get a bit of an understanding on what's happening there, why we're doing this a certain way. You have a lot of flexibility and we have a lot of options these days where you don't have to use any paid service. WireGuard is a great service and a lot of the community stand behind that. That's perfectly fine. It really comes down to personal preference. And this is only one way of doing things. You may know various other ways. I would love to learn from you as well in the community. Be sure to share that back with us. Maybe you have a better approach, but that's really all I had for today. I think it's a really important subject that people are always asking us about. Give it a go, give it a try. If you like it, let us know. If you don't, let us know as well. And we'll see you in the next Ibra Corp video.